Pokemon games have had more than their fair share of glitches throughout the years, including some useful ones like the missing no glitch to get any item you want, the tweaking glitch to access event only Pokemon in generation four, and whatever this is. There are also a ton of useless glitches as well that don't accomplish anything but might make you go, huh, that's pretty cool I guess. Like this glitch in HeartGold and Soul Silver involving any Pokemon that's following you around. All you need to do is have your lead Pokemon get poisoned, then get near a ledge, and if you jump over the ledge at the same time that your Pokemon would have recovered from poison by going to 1 HP, it will just start floating in the air menacingly. This can easily be fixed by walking into a building or going into a menu, but if you ever wanted to make Scyther fly, this is about as close as it gets. There isn't really anything you can do with this glitch, but hey, you read the title, didn't you? Now let's say instead of having your Pokemon float around behind you, you want to make your character spin endlessly everywhere you went. Why would you want to do this? I have no idea, but if you really wanted to do this, you could do this in Pokemon Red and Blue. All you have to do is go to the Safari Zone, pay to get in, turn back into the gate, then walk back outside of the Safari Zone again and save your game, then reset. Once your game is loaded back up, walk back inside the Safari Zone gates and the guards won't stop you, allowing you to go all the way back through Fuchsia City while still being entered in the Safari Zone. Next, you want to fly to anywhere where they have spinny tiles, like in Giovanni's Gym in Viridian City, and make sure you're spinning around when the Safari Zone step counter runs out. You'll then be warped back to the Safari Zone gate, but once you exit, you'll be warped back to outside wherever the spinny tiles were, in our case, Viridian City, but you'll still be spinning around indefinitely. It even works on your bike, it makes you go slightly slower than normal, but it looks really funny and has no actual purpose. But check this out, I can do a 360 spin in the air on my bike in Pokemon now, which is pretty neat. Another thing that serves no purpose is the Moon Ball in Generation 2. It's an item that's supposed to make it easier to catch Pokemon that evolve via Moonstone like Clefairy, but it's glitched and only makes it easier to catch Pokemon that only evolve with a Burn Heal, which isn't possible, effectively making the Moon Ball just a useless Pokeball that has no added effect. I'm using the word glitch a bit loosely here since you don't even have to do anything to accomplish it, but it just makes it even more useless. Now let's say because of this glitch you hate Burn Heal so much that when you're playing through Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, you don't want to see their names on the item list when you're in the Pokemart because they make you so angry. Well, if you take a Pokemon with Sweet Scent into any Pokemart, like this Teddy Ursa for example, then use the move Sweet Scent in the overworld, you'll notice that when you talk to the clerk to buy items, all of the items just have no names and the window is blank. You can still buy items, but now you don't have to look at that pesky burn heal anymore. You can easily fix this glitch by just leaving the mart and coming back in again. Now, for another small glitch in Diamond and Pearl, this is the HM for Defog. Notice how the disc is blue? That's the color the HM is supposed to be for water type moves, but Defog is actually a flying type move instead and should be this more grayish color. Let's move on to Generation 5 next, where on Route 19 you could just walk into this wall. You can barely go in this wall and there's no purpose to this, but there's a few other spots you can do this in Gen 5, as well as in the Generation 3 games too, like in Ruby and Sapphire, you can just walk into the side of Teutopolis City like this. They patched this glitch in Pokemon Emerald version, but Emerald has a unique glitch very similar to this glitch in the same city nonetheless. If you go inside the Teutopolis City gym and go down the very first ladder you see, you can just walk into the wall here too. I don't understand how they managed to fix one glitch just to add another very similar one in the same city, but at least it gives me something else to show off in this video, which by the way, if you're enjoying, consider leaving a like and subscribing for more Pokemon videos. Now let's say you're tired of walking into walls and you want to make an NPC walk through walls instead. Well, in Ruby and Sapphire next to Mallville City, this one Aroma Lady will just walk up the ledge to battle you. These Aroma Ladies really are out for blood. Now that's not technically a wall as it's a ledge, but how about this next one? You can also make this friendly Pokemart clerk walk through walls and even through trees. Normally he just guides you to the Pokemart and gives you a potion, but let's say you ignored him when you first started out this game, beat the entire game, and filled out your bag entirely so you can't add any more items to it. If you then go to Old Yale Town and talk to the clerk to get the potion, he won't be able to give it to you because your bag is full, but he'll still wait for you in front of the Pokemart. If you go barely north enough to Route 103, then come back immediately into Old Dale Town and talk to the clerk again in front of the Pokemart, he will still try to guard you to the Pokemart even though you talk to him right outside of it anyway, resulting in him guiding you through walls and through some trees even. You can easily walk right out to the trees and back into Old Dale Town, but he will be stuck there until you reload the area. Now while this guy is stuck in the trees, let's head for Duford City and go all the way into the gym and read this sign telling us about the gym leader and its leader, Brawly. 
In case you walked past this gym and forgot what it said and wanted to read it again, no problem, you can just read the sign again by interacting with this wall which has no sign on it, and if for some reason you forgot what the sign said a second time and want to read it again, you can go a bit farther up and read the sign again by interacting with this part of the wall. My guess for why this happens is they originally planned to have the gym signs be somewhere else, but accidentally left the data for interacting with them behind. If you want to see a full explanation for why this glitch happens, as well as videos explaining why other glitches happen in Pokemon, check out Dr. Frugal's channel link in the description, who has some videos explaining why some of these glitches happen and even tries to fix some of them. I found their channel while finding glitches for this video, and it's pretty neat. Now that we've had enough fun in the gym, let's go to the Sky Pillar next. We won't be capturing Rayquaza here, instead we'll go to the second floor of the pillar, go across the broken floor with our mock bike, then fall down this patch here and land on this rock on the floor below it that we're not supposed to be on. You can just walk right off and continue as normal, but it seems like a pretty weird oversight for them to have in this game. That's enough fun in the Sky Pillar, let's go to Rustboro City next and go to the Trainer School for our next class. Have you ever looked at the windows in here and thought, wow, these windows are cool, but I sure do wish they had some curtains on them? Well, you're in luck, sort of. If you go into your PC and deposit Pokemon in the top row of box 8, then go back into the trainer school, you'll notice that they have some black curtains now. You can mess around with the Pokemon in your PC a bit more to make the curtains look a bit differently if you want, like when I did here where there was just two black lines all the way at the bottom of the curtains. According to Bulbapedia, the bug occurs because data for the tile IDs greater than 790 is overridden with Pokemon data and the pixels of the window depend on the data of tiles 791 to 793. I don't really know what that means, but this is one of the strangest glitches I've ever seen in any Pokemon game. The Celadon City department store in Fire Red and Leaf Green has some weird quirks to it as well. Let's say you go to Celadon City to pick up the Eevee from the man in the apartments buildings back here. If you check its summary, the med location for the Eevee will say Celadon City because of course that's where you got it. Now if you go into the department store and check that very same Eevee summary again, it will say that you met it in the Celadon City department store even though it's not exactly true and you met it just in Celadon City. The same thing happens with eggs that you hatch in Celadon City or any other Pokemon you get, like from the game corner. Now let's go back to talking about signs again for a minute, but not in Duford City. This time we're headed to Kalos. In Pokemon X and Y, if you walk past any type of sign, your character's head will look towards the sign, allowing you to interact with the sign without actually facing it. This is just a small quality of life improvement that works on all signs in the game, except for this one specific sign right outside of the Pokemon Daycare Center where you breed your Pokemon. You can only read this sign if you're directly facing it. Your character's head doesn't even turn towards it, which is really strange. That's enough useless Pokemon glitches for now, I'm gonna go take a break and go fishing. This spot in Brock's gym looks like a good spot to fish because, yeah, in Pokemon Red and Blue you can just go up to one of these statues and fish inside of them, although you'll never end up actually catching anything.